The rain has returned while Chris and Kathy raise the anchor. I am at the helm following the line of our incoming course on entering Mast Bay from Dangerous Passage two days ago. Suddenly, we come to an abrupt stop with a jarring crash, which raises the bow and tips us slightly to port. We have hit an unmarked rock lurking a foot or so beneath the surface at zero tide. We launch the small tender and attach the battery for its electric motor. Chris takes photos. Using a waterproof camera for underwater shots. Fortunately, we have a rising tide, and within 48 minutes, we float free. We are not in immediate danger, but Venture needs to be hauled to check and repair the damage. Prince William Sound has just three towns of any size. We have good friends in Cordova from previous visits. We contact them by phone and they tell us the town has a 150 ton travel lift. So we head in that direction. We stop for the night at Snug Corner Cove, 58 nautical miles away. Captain Cook called here in May 1778 to make urgent repairs to his ships, resolution and discovery, shown here in this painting by Steve Mayo. Resolution in the foreground had a seam above the waterline which had opened so wide it had to be caulked using rope. The following morning we continue on to Cordova. The town's marina is undergoing a total and complete rebuild. Ample slips are available, but none are yet equipped with either power or water. We are relieved to be safely tied up with the knowledge that we can be hauled out the following day. Without a travel lift, the only alternative option would be to use a tidal grid, which is the modern equivalent to careening, but still impractical for boats, unlike venture, where the keel does not extend below the running gear. The yard is a short distance out of town and close to Fleming Creek. No relation. Invented 70 years ago in 1954, the travel lift has transformed the hauling and movement of boats. Venture weighs about 120,000 pounds we estimate we hit the rock at idle speed of six knots and came to a dead stop within five feet. So the impact force on the hull was considerable. Fortunately, we had not made the instinctive mistake of reversing off the rock, so damage was limited. We are now able to inspect the hull for damage. Rain is a daily event so it is necessary to build a protective structure over the bow. The first job is to grind away the fractured areas of the fiberglass, which creates toxic dust and requires the wearing of protective gear. Once grinding is complete, it is followed by lamination. We are pleased to see that the props are clean after so many weeks. 
This is due to a protective coating of prop speed. There were other boats in the yard. Crows squabbled over the barnacles scraped from their hulls. Meanwhile, we have to move off the boat and stay in a local hotel named The Reluctant Fisherman. The bar has a magnificent salmon made from US one penny coins. It has a fine view over Cordova Marina. Cordova is a small town with a couple of main streets. Here is the Alaskan Hotel. When asked why some of the signs are upside down, I was told it was so they could still be read when lying in the gutter. We have time to fill while work is in progress. We drive up Ayak Lake Highway to the fast flowing river at its head. It will shortly be full of salmon battling their way upstream with bears trying to catch them. We also follow the road running alongside the Copper River Flats, a pathway for shallow draft brow pickers on their way to the Copper River Delta. The road past Mudhole Airport is now closed at mile 36 due to a washed out bridge. Runoff from nearby glaciers flows at a prodigious speed, sweeping aside all obstacles in its path. We are very fortunate to be given a personal tour of the Prince William Sound Science Center by the lady in charge. This new and impressive facility was partially funded by the Exxon Valdez Reparations Council. The totems at the entrance to this new facility were carved by Mike Weber. We visited his workshop and saw the tools he used. He now processes salmon and he showed us his mobile processing van which he designed and built. After 10 days the repair work is complete. To save time, final shaping of the stem to the original profile will be left until later. We take a celebratory photo. The travel lift returns venture to her element.
Back at the marina, we still have no shore power, but we do have water. The marina bustles with working fishing boats of all types. This moving memorial for fishing folk lost at sea overlooks the harbour. There are many names. It is time for us to move on and bid farewell to Cordova, where venture was repaired and where we met so many friends who helped us in our time of need. It was not the experience we planned, but one which was rewarding just the same. This was our first mishap in cruising over 100,000 miles in Venture 1 and Venture 2. But a timely reminder never to be complacent. <laughs>